Amen. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Praise the Lord. I missed my cue there. A little late, a little late on the on the uptake. But God is in the house. Amen. Yes. Amen. And victory is certain with Him, and He is our source and our strength. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the Book of Romans. Romans this morning. I want to read you a quick portion of Scripture, and I want to talk to you about the difference in transaction and transformation. So what the Bible says, Romans chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Everybody say new life. New life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. Everybody say, done away with. Done away with. And that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. I thank you, Jesus, that we can come into your house with thanksgiving and with praise. And so, Lord, today... We just give you all the glory. We ask you, Lord, to touch our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. Well, it has been quite a week for us. What are you guys doing? We're here for the picnic. Is it the picnic day, guys? Uh, no. We got side dish. We got our Bible. We got our stuff. We're going to really get so you got the bread and the bread. That's good. Um, ladies, the, the, <laughs> the picnic is um, it's next week. <laughs> it's, no, the picnic's not this week. The picnic is, is next week. So you want us to come here next week? No, no, it's not going to be here. It's at Jackson Cove. So if you come... Huh? No, no, at 10 o'clock. No, at 10. Well, 10 o'clock is when we're going to is when we're going to meet and the service will start at 1030. But you're going to want to get there a little bit early. Uh, you, I have no doubt that you'll be there <laughs> early. Um, so we still bring a side dish, right? You should bring sure. a side dish. In fact, you could sign up right now. Look at that. In fact, you should sign up right now at cornerstonect.org. Give these guys a hand. We hope that you will all join us next week at our church picnic. Please, we are in one big service next week at Jackson Cove. It is going to be an awesome time. We always have a great time together, worshiping together. And, uh, and of course, our water baptism service at the end. And, uh, and I just am really looking forward to it. So please, 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 please get signed up online. You, can, you have my permission right now to go on your phone or tablet and sign up. And it's really important because the size that our church is now, we really do need to have a good handle on how many people are coming to make sure we have appropriate seating and, and all of that. So, um, so please take the time, get signed up. If you don't have a mobile device, you can sign up at the, uh, at, in the, in the, uh, I don't know what we're calling the new carport, the, the, the carport lobby. I don't know. What, we got to come up with a clever name, uh, but uh, the vestibule, that's what they used to call it right back in the day. But, um, but anyway, please get signed up and let us know. And everybody's invited and bring your whole neighborhood and don't bring your dogs, but bring everything else. And, um, you know, and, and we, will, we will have a wonderful time. I'm so excited. I have two nieces that are coming from Oklahoma. They're visiting this that week and uh, they're being water baptized at our water baptism service. And I'm super just pumped. So amen. Amen. But, uh, <clears throat> but we're talking about the idea of of a transaction versus transformation and and we talk, we're we're having a water baptism next next week at at Jackson Cove and you know the the thing about water baptism is is water baptism literally brings you closer to God it, it's it's a it's a commitment that you're that you're making a a public declaration and it's a symbol of your full devotion to him 
And, uh, and, and, and basically what it does is it, it, it gives you uh, a connection point with other, uh, with other believers. They look at you and by making a public confession of faith in Jesus, then what you're, what you're illustrating is, hey, listen, I, I, I belong to him. It's kind of like, you know, I, I live here in New England. We, ha- we all do. We've, I've lived here for, uh, for over 20 years. And, and so growing up in, in Oklahoma, uh, my, the, the local university, Oklahoma University, that was our college team. And, and so OU, the Sooners, you know. And, and so when, I, when I'm out here, and I see somebody wearing a Sooners t-shirt, it's a, it's, a, it's a direct invitation of conversation for me because I have, a, I have a, an affinity with them because somehow, in some way, we're all connected to, to Oklahoma. And, uh, and so, and so when, you, when you go through the, the public display of water baptism, what you're announcing is, I belong to Jesus. And uh, in, 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 in a similar way, it's, well, it's a very similar way, the same way we wear wedding rings. You know, it's a symbol that says, I belong to somebody. And, uh, and if you mess with me, she's going to beat you until, no, I'm kidding. But, but, but so essentially what baptism is, water baptism, is it is a, an outward an outward expression of an inward experience. We've, we've given a commitment to Jesus. Jesus is rocking our world and changing our life. And, and, and we just want the world to know that. And so, and so it's God's way for us to express and announce to the world that we are Christ followers. And by your baptism in water, you're sending a message to the world that you belong to him. In Mark's gospel, in Mark chapter 8, verse 38, it says this, Jesus speaking, he says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. And, and so what Jesus is saying, and if, if you read the, this whole passage here, what, what Jesus is actually saying is, he's saying, look, I love you. I love you so much that I went to the cross to die for your sins. I, I fought death, hell, and the grave and defeated them. And I rose again on the third day. And I did all of that because I love you. But I don't follow you. You follow me. And, and, and so if you want to follow me, then you must do the things that I do. And so in our Romans passage where we started this morning, if you remember in verse 4, Romans 6, 4, it says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism. That's why, that's why we dunk under the water. It's a symbol of us dying or going into the grave. And, 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 then, and then it says, and into, uh, into death in order that just as Christ was raised from death through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life say new again new. it's it's new it's different it's something has happened but the problem church is that in in the western church especially in america we ha- we really hang our hat on the decision we come to church, I preach a sermon. At the end of the sermon, I say, if you want to make that commitment to Jesus Christ, please raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I say this all the time and almost 100% of the time we have people respond with an upraised hand. Then we try to give you information. But, but what happens is, is that a lot of people view this as a spiritual it's as just as a spiritual transaction but can i tell you that the the prayer of salvation is is a very important first step that's why we have a class called next steps because it's a, it's 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 okay now what <laughs> i've given my life to jesus now what am i supposed to do with that it's not, it's not just, you know, I, I, it's not just I say a prayer and Jesus saves my soul and, and then there's no real change in my life. There must be change. You know, that's the whole reason why Christ died on the cross is so that you could have new life. So he, he sacrificed his life so that you would have the opportunity 
uh, not just to make a deal with him, not just to simply exchange a prayer for a promise, but that your whole life would be completely transformed. Amen. How many know that the life that you live as a believer in Jesus Christ is different than the life that you lived before you met Jesus? If you if you say a prayer of salvation, raise your hand, say, I want to give and you repeat that prayer and there's no change in your life. Then I would argue that you've simply made a transaction, but there's been no transformation. And, and so, church, that's what water baptism illustrates in verse 4, that you have a new life. You, you died to your old life, and you are raised up in a new life in Jesus Christ. This word new in this passage of Scripture comes from the Greek word kainos. And that word translated means made superior. You follow me? That's, I, listen, my wife and I were talking last night about how this theme of redeem the time, now that we are seven months into this year, it is really starting to bubble in our church. People are talking to me all the time about redeeming the moments and redeeming the time and taking advantage. Church, we buried four people in the last three weeks, and I am telling you something. It has made it very, very obvious to me that time is short. And you are not guaranteed your next moment. We must redeem the time. And this word here, kainos, which means made superior, new. You're made superior. And it, what, the, what he's saying is, is I am going to exchange your life for a better life. Amen. I'm redeeming it. In other words, by water baptism, you're making a public announcement, a public declaration that the old me is gone and that and that how I am being transformed into a suit into something superior, not in my own strength, but under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's in my life. And, and, and so listen, and now I can, I'm preaching this and I'm preaching it into a room of a bunch of Christians and we get it. We get excited about that, don't we? Because we, it resonates with us that, that my old life has changed. But, and so we, 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 we got each other's back. But if you preach this message to the world that, that, and you begin to transform to the people in your sphere that are still in the world, even though when you start to transform, it doesn't always translate. You follow me? And I will tell you this, that not everybody's going to like the new you. In fact, Jesus said, they're going to hate you, but just remember they hated me first. Well, isn't that good news? <laughs> then, listen, they're not going to understand why you don't want to go hang out at the bar anymore. They're not going to get it. They're going to say, well, you think you're better than me? Yes. <laughs> All I know is I was made new. And that means I was made superior, not to you, but to my old self. I'm different. They're not going to understand why you don't curse anymore. Why you temper your tongue. They're not going to understand why you don't sleep around anymore. They're not going to understand why you don't cheat to get ahead anymore. They're not going to get that because that's not who you used to be. And you say, that's right, because that man is dead. I have been made new in Jesus. Guys, some of them are going to get, some of your friends are going to get bitter because you traded poker night for men's group. <laughs> They're not going to get it. Because what happened to you was not a transaction. It's a transformation. It's made new. The early church understood this in the book of Acts. They knew that by them following after Jesus meant that they were going to have to go against the Roman government. That was no small thing. The Roman government was the most powerful, resourced, influential uh, entity in the world. And, and at the snap of a finger or the turn of a thumb, you could have your life taken from you just because they didn't like what you look like. 
It was a horrible situation to live in and they were willingly swimming upstream in that. The, the, the early church knew that not only would they be going against the Roman government, but they would be going against their own religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of that day, because they still wanted to look for a Messiah, but the Messiah had already come. You know, they, they would live against the grain of society, and they knew full well that a transformed life meant that they may lose their life. In his book, in Colin Marshall's book, The Trellis and the Vine, he says this. He says, if you stuck your head up as a convert to Christ, whether Jew, God-fearing, Gentile, or pagan, you were in danger of getting it lopped off. At the very least, you would be asked to give a reason for your new hope. Peter's, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 says, says this, uh, verse, beginning with verse 13. He says, who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good? Now, don't we think this? Like we're Christians and we're, we're out to do good things and to live a good life and to bless people. Who in the world would not want you to do that? It's, listen, whatever your political view is, and you know, I, I, it just baffled me when Trump was pushing for the tax cuts and so many people were against tax cuts. I'm like, who wants to pay more taxes? Who wants to do that? But, but see, this is the craziness of, 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 of the tension in, in, in the world. And, and, and so Peter says, look, who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. So don't fear their threats. Don't be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Not, I'm better than you. Yes. That's not what that is. Jesus Christ didn't come to be served, but to serve. He was a servant of all, amen? And so our job is to serve. In fact, the Bible says that they will know you by your fruit. By your fruit. And what is the number one fruit? They will know you by your love, yes. amen? And so as we love people and as we serve people, they see Christ in us. But, but, then, but then he goes on, he says, he says watch this, he says, uh, what does he say? Oh, yeah, don't fear the threats. Don't be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that you, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ. You know what your good behavior in Christ is? A transformed life. Your good behavior in Christ is your life transformed. And they may be ashamed of their slander. Church, we have many, many times, this is the testimony. We'll have a first time guest who will come into this church and they're, you know, they're kind of looking around and all of a sudden they'll recognize somebody and they'll say to me, that person comes to this church? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, do you know who they are? I said, I know who they are. I may not know who they were, but I know who they are. Amen? Amen? Well, if you knew who they were, you wouldn't let them in this church. <laughs> well, probably not. It's a good thing it's not up to me. <laughs> Amen? There's a lot more I could say on that, but we're going to move on. And that, that's, that's, the power, that's the transforming power of the cross, church. That when somebody's life can be, can be so, like their testimony can be so detestable. And then when somebody sees them, they say, I can't, I can't believe that's the same person. That's a transformed life. And so, so uh, let, let, me, let me just walk you through a, a couple of thoughts um, before we go on. Because perhaps you're here today and... And you need to go public with your faith. And, 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 and as, because we're having a water baptism next Sunday, um, you need to participate in that water baptism. And, and so what I've done is we've, we've got a, we, inside your bulletins, there's a little, little sign-up card. 
and I'm just trying to, to help you with this because I, I, want you to, I want you to walk in the fullness of the, of the joy that there is in, in knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so I'm just going to ask you, if you want to be water baptized, you want to go public with your faith, and I'm going to answer some of the questions here in just a moment, but um, just fill that little card out and give it to one of our ushers on your way out today, and we'll, we'll be in touch with you tomorrow or the next day to give you some more details. But more importantly, because this is first service, I want to invite you. In fact, I, I implore you, uh, at, during third service, we have a water baptism class, and all of your questions can be answered there. And uh, Pastor Grant's, listen, today is Pastor Grant's birthday. Come on, somebody. Amen? And... And you know what he would want more than anything else for his birthday is to be able to pour into you. Amen. And so and so if, I, I want to encourage you go down to the to the class uh, during third service and, uh, and, and and get all your questions answered. I would strongly encourage that. So. So let me let me talk to you about the 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 literal view of water baptism for just a, a couple of minutes and and what it means to be transformed and not just a transaction matthew chapter 28 the great commission jesus has died he's fought death hell in the grave he's risen again he's about to ascend into heaven and he gives us these final words and 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 how many know final words are important amen the last words that he said and so he says this in verse 18 he says then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit and teach them to obey everything that i've commanded you and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age that was the command to the believers before he ascended into heaven what happens next is nothing short of miraculous. 120 people meet in an upper room. They begin praying. They're seeking. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon them, empowers them. And then Peter goes out and he becomes the first street preacher, uh, evangelist, and mega church pastor like all in one day. And in Acts chapter 2, we see what happens. Now, remember, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're all the accounts of Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the very next book in the Bible is the book of Acts. It actually stands for the Acts of the Apostles. These are the people that follow Jesus closely, right? They walk with Jesus. Jesus was training them to launch his church. This is why they needed the Holy Spirit. And so, so we're in the, in the book of Acts, and in, and in the second chapter, it says, therefore, uh, verse 36, therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. This is Peter preaching. He says, uh, he says God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. That's a pro pretty profound statement. And, uh, and then he says in verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and all the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, repent. And be baptized repent and be baptized give your life to Jesus make the decision I give my life to you Jesus and now be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the promise is for you and it's for your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord will call with many other words he warned them and pleaded with them save yourself from this corrupt generation those who accepted this message were baptized and check this out about 3,000 were added to their number that day now that's a picnic <laughs> amen 3,000 people so very quickly who should be baptized and when should you be baptized? Quick answer is this. Anybody who has made a commitment to Jesus Christ, anybody who said, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life, should be water baptized. And you should be water baptized as soon as possible. As soon as possible. I don't have the time to go through all of the passages of Scripture. The class would definitely help you. I know Pastor Grant has a, uh, some literature that has all of this written out for you. But in the book of Acts, there are many accounts of people. Sometimes it's one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it's large groups of people. Sometimes it's in a public square. Sometimes it's in a mud puddle on the side of the road. It, the point is, is that when they were water baptized, they got water baptized as soon as they 
could. There are some churches that they, as soon as you make a decision for Christ, you know, we make it very comfortable here. Oh, every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, raise your hand. We have somebody meet with you one-on-one. But in some churches, they come and they grab you by the hand and they walk you up and then they take you to a water baptismal tank with your full clothes on in the moment and they dunk you before you had a chance to change your mind. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, so we're going to seal the deal today. And while I love that, I fear that there would be far less people coming to church here. Anybody who's made a commitment to Christ should be water baptized and should be water baptized as soon as possible in any water. There's nothing magical about the water. It, it, it literally could be a mud hole. It, or it could be a, a beautiful baptistry in, in, a, in an ornate church. It doesn't matter. The point is, is, what you're, is the why you're doing it. How should you be water baptized? There's lots of different ways to be water baptized. Some people sprinkle. Some people flick. Some people, but we, we dunk you, baby. We dunk you all the way under. And we hold you there until you were at the brink of your last breath. <laughs> We want to make sure it sticks. You know, I'm kidding. But we do. We, we, we do what's called immersion. Come on, man. Stay with me. Stay with me. Somebody, I see purses going on shoulders like I'm out of here. I'm done. This church crazy. Um, we, we baptize by, what, by what's called immersion. The Greek word for baptism is the word baptizo. And the word literally means immerse, to saturate, to soak, or to die. Uh, D-Y-E, die. <laughs> and, uh, and so Jesus, Jesus taught this. He taught immersion, baptizo. It, it's, so it's important to Jesus, so it should be important to us. Now, church, we have got to shake off man's view of baptism. We've got to shake it off because, because the, man waters baptism down, no pun intended, man waters baptism down by making it about church membership or denominational affiliation. Can I, can I tell you, Baptism is not about joining a church. You, you, listen, you, you don't, this is not about Cornerstone. It's not about the Assemblies of God. It, in fact, it's not even about Protestantism or Pentecostalism or Catholicism. It's not about any of that, okay? It's about, it, listen, it's, it's, not, it's also not about your parents' decision that they made for you when you were a kid. In, in many faith practices, there's what we call infant baptism, how many infant baptized when you were a kid? A lot of people. Amen. So, so that, that practice started about 150 years ago. And uh, infant baptism is, is kind of what I would equate, in, or in our faith practice, what I would equate to uh, a baby dedication. And, and, it's, and it's the parents standing in front of uh, uh, the body of, of, of believers saying, we are making a, a vow unto the Lord to bring our child up in the fear of the Lord and to, to teach them the word of God. That's a good thing, church. That's not a, a bad thing. And, and, so, and so listen to me. By you making a decision as an adult to, to, uh, to, to follow Jesus Christ and his example of water baptism is not a slap in the face to what your parents did when you were an infant. It's just not. It's not an insult to mom and dad for the decision they made for you. In fact, what they did for you was a good thing. It was a, it was a good thing. But now you are an adult and you are making, you are making a, a faith choice uh, on your own to, to allow you to, to submit your life to Jesus Christ. So your parents essentially got the ball rolling in your life. They, they committed you to the Lord. They raised you in the Lord. And now you're old enough to make a spiritual choice on your own. You're embracing your faith and you're saying yes to the Lord Jesus. I will follow your example into water baptism. Jesus himself was water baptized. I'm going to go public with my faith. I mentioned before that there are many passages about people being water baptized in the book of Acts. In fact, there's 27 of them in the book of Acts. And that's why we call it a believer's baptism. You, you're, you're baptized after you believe in Jesus. Now listen to me very, very carefully. I want you to understand what I'm not saying. <laughs> okay? You do not have to be water baptized in order to be saved 
or to get to heaven. You do not have to be water baptized to be saved or to get to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 makes that crystal clear. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 8, For it is by grace that you have been saved. Through your faith, it is not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. Your salvation does not come from any action of your own other than you have faith and you believe that Jesus Christ died for you, that he forgives you of your sins, and because of his ultimate and infinite grace and mercy, that he is washing you and making you new on the inside. Amen? And so baptism is essentially a work of man, and it's under your control, and Scripture is clear that there is no work that can save you. The very next verse in Ephesians 2.9 says, Not of works, lest any man boast. So works we know are necessary for, to please God. Look, my son is 10 years old and he is welcome to live in my house and I would not kick him out of my house. And, but he is a choice. I mean, he, he could come in uh, into, the, into the living room in the morning and he could sit down and start watching television or he can grab the vacuum cleaner and start vacuuming the rugs. It's not going to change the fact that he's my son. But I will tell you, I will be much more pleased with him if he chose to go vacuum the rugs. Amen? And so water baptism, is a, is, it, just, it just makes the father beam with joy inside because his children are going deeper in their commitment. So, so think about this. The thief on the cross, the thief on the cross had zero time, no time to be water baptized. Once, once, he, once he acknowledged that Jesus was Lord, he said that you're the Messiah and remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Once he said all that, he, he couldn't say, Ex excuse me, executioner, I, I got to go get water baptized. Allow me to get off of this. Go find a body of water. Get baptized so I can go to heaven. No, he didn't have any time for that. He had no time to do any good. He had no time to make penance or to, do, or to fix things in his life. And yet Jesus looked at him and said, today you would be with me in paradise. So, so see, water baptism is not about salvation. Water baptism is about identification. Who do you identify with? Whose team are you on? I'm on team Jesus. Amen. Yes. So when should you water baptize? As soon as possible after confession. Matthew chapter 3 verse 6 says, confessing their sins they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Very quickly, why? Why be water baptized? A couple reasons. Number one, God said so. That's a good reason, right? God said so. Jesus commanded it. Jesus demonstrated it. And Jesus' followers practiced it. Now, a lot of people want to fix things in their life before they're water baptized. A lot of people want to, want to feel worthy before they're water baptized. They, they, they hold water baptism as a high level of sanctity, which is, I understand. But, but, can, I, but can I tell you, so you, you, you can't go get something straightened out or, or fix something in your life to qualify you to be water baptism. There's one qualification. That is, that is forgiveness of your sins by the grace of God through your faith in Jesus Christ. So, you know, look, if you, if you, could, if you could wash yourself if you could release yourself from sin's bondage, you wouldn't need Jesus. We, we need Jesus. That's the, uh, that's the only stipulation. So, so, so water baptism is about, like in Acts chapter 22, verse 16, it says, and now what are you waiting for? <laughs> I love that. The Bible's like so in your face. Dude, what you waiting for? I mean, really? You going to get your life worked out? Jesus already took care of that. You know, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Man, we all need people like that in our life that will just speak that boldly, right? But you got to give them permission to do so. That's another sermon. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 says, in the last part of that, it says this, Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. So we should be water baptized because God commanded it. We should be water baptized because it releases God's anointing on your life. Did you know that? There's, um, in the Old Testament, uh, 
you know, they had the Elijah Elisha class. There were like over 20 people showed up for that class this past Thursday. This awesome. And, um, and when you're t- talking about Elijah and Elisha, um, there was a, remember uh, when Elijah prayed, he said, I just want a double portion of your anointing. And, and Elijah takes the, his mantle, his, his clothing, it's, a, it's like a sash, and he passes it on to Elisha. And what that is, is he's, he's, he's clothing him in his anointing. It was, a, it was a very common practice and it's still a practice in Jewish culture. And, uh, but it's a symbol, it's a symbol of, of clothing yourself in the anointing that is upon somebody else. And the Bible says that when Jesus was water baptized, right, he came out of the water. And when he came out of the water, there was the Holy Spirit ascended like a dove from heaven. And this was the anointing being placed upon him so that he would be released into his earthly ministry uh, for those three years before he, uh, before he would be crucified. And so Jesus carried this anointing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 6 says this, You are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ, that's your salvation, for all of you who are baptized into Christ, watch this, have clothed yourself with Christ. So when we, when we go through the, wa- the waters of baptism, it is a tra- there's, a, there's a spiritual transference of anointing that happens over our life. And, and this is part of why it's so important for us to, uh, to, to be responsible in that, uh, in that action. So it, it releases anointing in your life. And another reason to be water baptized is because it releases joy in your life. It releases joy in your life. In Acts chapter 8, the Bible says about the Ethiopian eunuch when he got, I mean, this is, this is the one who got baptized in a mud puddle. And, and it, it says this, it says, when, after he was baptized in Acts 8, it says, but the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. He was pumped. I mean, he was so overjoyed. Acts chapter 16, talking about the Philippian jailer, uh, he said this, the Philippian jailer was filled with joy and he and his whole family were filled with joy. Water baptism releases joy inside of your life. How many times have we seen people uh, come up and they're terrified to give their testimony, and, but they share their testimony, they go under the waters of baptism, they come up and they're like, woo, yeah. They're super, they're super pumped. Why? Because something's happening inside of them that they can't explain. It's like a a joy that's just exploding out of them. And it's an empowerment to say, listen, I belong to Jesus. I'm on team Jesus. He, I belong to him. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got that exchange. I'm a redeemed person. God is making something new out of me. I'm a life transformed. I'm not the same person that I used to be. I've changed and I'm transforming. And I, go, I don't have it all worked out yet, but I'm, I'm getting better every single day. And every day that I walk closer with Jesus the, the, is better than the day before I was with Jesus. And I'm just going to keep on pursuing. Him and I and I want to keep on walking after him. And the closer I get to him, the more thrilled I am to be part of the family of God. And people are going to be touched by me, and people are going to be blessed by my testimony, and people are going to be changed and transformed because I'm changed and transformed. And you may not like the new me, but this is the new me. Take it or leave it. And there's going to keep on keeping on, amen. For the kingdom of God. So my question to you is this. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? The only stipulation is faith in Jesus Christ. So why don't we take care of that this morning? Why don't you stand up with me this morning? The only stipulation is faith in Jesus Christ. It's not a transaction. It's a transformation. And so so with your heads bowed this morning, I wonder... Is there anybody here and you would say, you know what, Pastor Chris, I need to to start there. I need forgiveness of my sins. I need to be set free from the bondage that sin has placed upon me. And I want to submit my life to Jesus Christ and receive the grace of God and the mercy of God because of my faith in Him. I admit that I'm a sinner and I'm giving my life to Jesus today. If you're here in this place and you say, that's me, Pastor, when you pray, 
You're praying for me. Would you just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for today? Thank you guys in the front. Anybody else? Say, I, I, that's me. You're, I want to I wanna go all in. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Anybody else? I, I want to go all in with Jesus. I want to go all in with Jesus. Hang out here for just another second. Holy Spirit moving on your heart. You need to make that decision. All right, let's, would you just repeat this prayer after me? Say, Jesus, I am a sinner, but I know that you died on the cross for my sins. So today, I am answering the call, and I submit all of my wrong, and I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. I give my life to you. I want to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you said, if you said that prayer and you believe in your heart, the Bible says that there is a transformation that's starting inside of your life. And, and so I, I want to just ask before we go, who, who wouldn't want freedom from sin's bondage? Who, who wouldn't want the release of God's anointing on your life? To have every day filled with joy. Because you have crossed over the line and you have decided to follow Jesus. And you put your identity in Him. So I challenge you, I encourage everyone, if you have not been water baptized, do it. Do it. Next week we will be celebrating with you at Jackson Cove, not here, okay? Do not come to church here next week, all right? We will not be here. Not even Jesus will be here. He'll be at Jackson Cove, all right? Every year, I do this every year, and every year somebody comes to church here, and they're like, oh, I forgot. Come to the picnic. Bring your friends and family. Celebrate. Show them the great love of God. Fill out that little sheet of paper. Hand it off to the ushers in the back. Let us know. Go to the class at third service. We'd love to see you. God bless you. Have an amazing week. And uh, we'll see you next week at the church picnic. God bless.